Hello and welcome to the Rhythm Factory. I'm Eddie C, and together with my co-host Peter D, we're going to bring you in touch with people in and around the music business. This is the podcast that takes you up close and personal. Hi everyone, and welcome once again to the Rhythm Factory podcast. My name is Eddie C, and to my right, my dear friend and colleague, Mr. Peter D. Today, I'm very, very happy to have a special guest uh, who happens to actually be one of my students. And once in a while, you get these students that have a very that are very talented. Most of my students are talented, or but this one is. Uh, been working with her now for some years and she recently has been to America uh, last year to do a competition which she'll tell you more about in a minute but I'll first introduce you Miss Dani Kos and percussionist and uh, future maybe for future professional artist depending on how <laughs> things go. Uh, welcome to our show Dani. Thank you. you. I want to uh, you know you, you went to this uh, WCOPA uh, yes, award, exactly. mm -hmm. award uh, contest in Hollywood. And you did quite well, which I'm very proud. <laughs> Thank see. you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you worked very hard for it. I know we spent spent a lot of time. A lot of you, time, yeah. Getting, oh, getting you prepared wow. and everything for mm -hmm. it. But you want to you tell our audience exactly what it is and uh, what you did. and. Well, actually, the festival is called the World Championships of Performing Arts. And it is actually just the Olympic Games for performing arts. You know, artists uh, go there, you, they're dancers, singers, instrumentalists, models. And uh, yeah, you know, all these kind of artists uh, who are competing against each other. Uh, in total, there are like 52 countries who are competing against each other. And I represented the Holland. And so, as first as the first as first Dutch uh, participant for this contest, that made it this far, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I made it to the finals, so that was so awesome because the finals, you know, that that is uh, a live final which is sent out live on TV and that stuff. And uh, actually, the the World Championships are founded by uh, Griff O'Neill, who is also the founder of Miss University. So that's so great, and he already did that festival for like uh, seven, 17 years. I, I joined the 17th annual World Championships. And so, you know, the great thing about also these World Championships is um, you stay in this hotel. And the hotel is the Westing Bonaventure, Los Angeles. And this is the place where everything happens. You know, you, you sleep there, you eat there, but you also compete there. And so all the contestants are in the same hotel and also the judges so they're around you all the time you have to be nice to everyone all the time you know because before you know even even if you are on the toilet or something like that they could be next to you so you have to be nice and quiet about everything and you know all the time and so but this is the great thing you know you got to meet all these people they're also giving you boot camps during during the two weeks because mm -hmm. the festival takes two weeks they're giving you boot camps they're giving you you know support um uh, but they're also judge you and while they're judging, they can also see give you out like a go-see, which is just like a little red, uh, yet red, no, it's yellow, the yellow paper, yeah, which, which uh, gets pinned on a board at the right, end, yeah. at the, the end, end of the first first week, and then you can go see them like uh, in in a special time, which is right, made for yeah. that. And so, um, yeah, what I did there, you know, I did uh, uh, three different instrumental acts, and also one stand-up comedy act. And with one of the instrumental acts, I made it to the finals, which is so, uh, you know, so awesome because I was the only one, uh, the first, actually the first Dutch person ever who made that foot to that finals. And the finals, you know, were crazy. We had uh, just one and a half day to go. It was uh, rehearsing, 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 you know, how do you need to walk? How do you need to stay? When are the cameras all, you know? It has to be, it had to be perfect, you know, right, it's right, life. Right. It's, it's so it's more than just about playing. It's, it's the, whole, yeah, the whole package. Yeah, exactly. But, that, you know, that was also one of the nice things you got to, uh, you, you know, you needed to have the whole package to, to come that far. It is not only your play, you, you know, you, the way you walk on stage, the way you dress, the way you talk to people and, you know, everything well, you're counts. Con you're constantly, you constantly have to be on your guard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, the only time I got to do like crazy, that was in my room. So sometimes I would like turn on the music very loud <laughs> and go crazy <laughs> dancing. And that's the, because that was the only place where I could do that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, uh, I'm going to show this just for a little while. It's it's a book, uh, the the world stars. It's about the yeah, festival yeah. you so played on. And this so this is this is your picture in the in mm, the book. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, 
But you also won prizes, right? I mean... Uh yeah, well, actually, uh, one of the prizes are right here. So uh, this is the medal you got when you got to the finals. This is just the gold one. And uh, in the categories I competed, I also got the medal. So I got two bronze and uh, one silver. And my silver act was for my act that I did. Um, I did play along on a song. So uh, it was Hey Ya and also a DJ mix. What was just on and then I played along with it and showed like, you know, I can do technical skills and all kind of solos and that stuff. And I also won a scholarship. Wow. In uh, New York uh, Conservatory of Dramatic Arts, which is so cool. I'm going to do that this summer in 2015. Right, right, right. Going to go to New York, five weeks. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be very intensive. Besides lessons, you also got business meetings. You have to do auditions. You have to, you know, connect and work together with all kind of managers. And uh, we stay in the campus, which is also, you know, middle of New York, staying in the campus, 70 years old by then, you know. And yeah. That's quite an experience. Yeah, yeah. And, and quite an achievement. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, mm -hmm. That's something you can be very proud of, and I know Eddie is proud of you. But it's <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you know, it's something you you can be very proud of. And um, you know, I, I I was looking uh, through your website, and um, there are some lovely quotes uh, on your website. It changes when you switch the pages. Mm -hmm. and, I know. You mm -hmm. know, and it's it's all about music, and and it, you know, it shows you have your history together, and of course, you know, Eddie taught you. A lot about oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there's some quotes <laughs> from you on the the side too. <laughs> but um, you mentioned like one quote on your website. You say uh, there's not a day that goes by without music for you. And mm -hmm. playing the percussion is really making you happy, and you like to make other people happy with your music and your playing. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Okay. How do you see that? Yeah. Well. And he also always says, bake the cake. <laughs> I'm not baking everyday cake, but <laughs> you know, we're, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, all these things. Yeah, um, everyone, sometimes people come to you and they say like, Danique, uh, how can you do that? I don't even have rhythm feeling, you know? And I'm like, everyone can play rhythm. And everyone has a kind of rhythm, you know, you can, you, everyone knows this story, you know, when you are in the stomach of your mom, you hear her heartbeat, and this is the first beat you will ever hear in your life. But everyone also has, like, a kind of rhythm in their lives, I think, you know, there's a way you wake up, and then maybe your routine is, when you wake up, you directly go to the toilet, or you directly wash your hands or something like that this this is a rhythm you have in your life you know and also maybe on every monday you go to the gym or you know do any kind of sports uh, and uh, everything has rhythm and i think uh that is something uh for me where it kind of started it started for me with travel i was eight years old and i was totally crazy about this girl group called treble this were three girls and they were the singing and yeah. at the same time playing the djembe playing the djembe yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. and you know i've been playing the djembe for around yeah forever right now since since my eight but um uh, very intensive for four years and i also did groups with that i like a local group of all people of my age who um yeah, we, we, we did a little tours, we did little performances, and I also got did a workshop once by Ali Nadia Rose, yeah. which is uh, uh, yeah just a very good Senegalese uh, uh, player. Yeah, and he he taught me a lot at uh, the conservatory at, at the Hague. He asked me, I was like Danique, uh, you're very good, and I was I was like ten I guess. I was like Danique, you're very good, but I I can make you better. And I give lessons at the conservatory, so if you want to, you can come two times, uh, uh, one time every two weeks, and I can give you lessons. So and that's also what I, uh, I, yeah, I did that for three and a half years, I guess. And then I started, uh, yeah, now looking for more because I only was doing the African stuff. And then I was like, uh, because I bought, I already bought congas and I already had my bongos, but I didn't know what to do with it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was looking around and I came uh, at the address of Eddie and I called Eddie once and I was like, hey, uh, um, you know, you're a percussionist and you also play congas and I also like to play congas. Can you come around sometimes? And he came around and he was like, what do you want to do? What do you want from me? You know, I was like, maybe you could give me a lesson or, or teach me uh, the things. So. Uh, that is the moment where it start building up and that stuff and you know since the moment I began I always had passion for for music and you know this passion is still there and I think uh, if you if you keep that and you know you work for your goals 
when you have the, yeah it, 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 for sure if you if you set the goal for yourself you know i think that's is also very important you know set a goal for yourself by this time i want to be able to do this or i want to stand on this stage or i want to you know performing with this and this person um yeah th th that will keep you growing and um well no day goes by without music for me yeah i'm, I'm still passionate i make music every single day i practice every single day you know to get better to uh, improve myself you know to uh, also keep the basics the basics and make sure i just got them in the fingers <laughs> and uh yeah so that about yeah and sometimes you know quote can also inspire you very much I oh think absolutely so. mm -hmm. yeah I am for sure. Well, you know, you know, you're now 16 and almost 17. <laughs> almost so, 17, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> I know how it is. What we've spoken about that quite often, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, being a musician, especially nowadays, things have changed uh, tremendously since the days when I was a session musician and playing. Of course, we spoke about that in an earlier podcast uh, with another colleague of ours how everything has gone now to how it looks and uh, the looks are seem to be just in some places more important than the way things sound mm -hmm. of course i always try to i've always yeah, yeah, yeah. try to keep mm -hmm. teach you from okay looks are important as well but most important is the heart and the playing mm -hmm. but <clears throat> let's say i know i know your ambitions are uh to be one of the the best musician you can possibly be mm -hmm. as, as time mm -hmm. goes, and, and you work hard for it. I, I can vouch for that, you know. And once in a while, you're still a teenager, so sometimes I have to get on your case. But, <laughs> 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 but outside of that, um, you know, let's say, for example, you decide to become a professional musician, and uh, that doesn't work out the way you want. And and like I said, you're still young, so you do you have a backup plan? If I have a backup plan. Well, uh, next year, um, I, re I already got invited, so that is very exciting. I wanted to, I really just want to go to the Conservatory of Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. There, you know, the world music part is very big there. The, you know, the, the top of Holland teaches there. It's, it's just great. But I do have a backup plan. Um, that is a hotel management study. Okay. Um, uh, you know, but um, I always will be making music. And I know there is something, uh, you know, there are a lot of musicians out there who are so good, so professional, but do not have like the paper, right. what you get uh, when yeah, you yeah, when yeah, you finish yeah. your study, you know. And um, uh, yeah. like yours truly. Yeah, but, but the thing is, <laughs> but the thing is, uh, you know, if you go to the conservatory, you'll be able to make music every day, uh, to you know, to be around music, to to study music. And when you do another, uh, because that is something I very realized, like very much, that when I would do uh, like the hotel study, I wouldn't be able to make that much music as I would uh, when I go to the conservatory. Right. So that's my backup plan. But, um, you know, I always be ma making music and I always uh, will be performing and that stuff and just doing the things I love. And uh, I think actually the combination of management and restaurants and hotel and entertainment just and music it works fits. Together. It definitely yeah. does. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, musicals also play in cafes and, and yeah, restaurants. Absolutely. And it's so well, it's, 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 it's a good combination. And uh, I think it's going to only not only help empower you uh, uh, as far as the business side, it's going to also make you a little bit more aware of what happens on the other side of the stage, mm -hmm. you know, exactly, yeah, behind the stage, mm -hmm. the scenes. So, it's 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 a very good choice that you're doing, you know. So yeah, like, yeah, and also, you know, you're learning business, which is yeah. I I I know some percussionists who did actually a hotel management uh, study that was uh, on on a lower uh, level, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. so it, so when you do a lower level, you most of the time it's logic that you have more time left. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, in that study, you learn uh, management, you learn business, and you can just do uh, possible. Uh, you can, you can, uh, you can, you can use it, use it, utilize. In, yeah, you can use that with your music. So mm -hmm. it's all about the following and, and yeah. Well, yeah, and it, and once again, it's, it's very important, uh, especially, you know, you being in your, actually, you just coming through that door, as we would say, you know, becoming a slowly becoming a young adult. <laughs> is, is in the process enjoy 
enjoy enjoy those youthful years while you can because it's gonna I tell you when you get older you look back and you you know don't you always say well if I would have been able to do this or that and I, I'm sure a lot of artists have that well I should have maybe did this because then I would have been able to do that and so you know take your steps enjoy and 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 make each step that you take make it worthwhile that's important mm -hmm. that's very important yeah you know yeah and and you know it's it's great to say or or know for yourself like I will always be making music because it's a passion you really have a love for it I mean you know I can tell by the way you you talk about it and I know stories from Eddie of course I mean and you you will always be making music you know you will always be be uh, either way recording or maybe you know live on stage uh, and you already have a pretty uh, some experience uh, a lot uh, yeah yeah um, and I, you know I, quite I, I was I was um, wondering because you're, you're participating in a girls band with friends of your age and yeah you exactly the record uh -huh. um, tell us a bit more about that band and, okay. and how did you experience recording that? Okay, well, uh, this is not the only band I have. I actually have six different bands I, I, I play in, which are just my standard bands. Uh, uh, the Gravedos, that's, that's very, I'll, I'll tell a funny story about that later. But, um, uh, and also the Blue Basement Big Band, it's a very big, big band, just jazz band. I play congas in a jazz band, but it's so good. It fits uh, the Maybellines, which are which is the girls' band, mm -hmm. uh, Lunique, That's a, a core quartet. Quartet. Qu yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I do have my my own band with the Nick Cause and all kind of people around. What just the what? What you doing? Yeah, what is wanted? And also the Johnny Galaxy disco band, which is just a disco band and it's disco going all the time. And uh, I get asked as a guest artist a lot. Also, that's crazy. But the girls' band, uh, you know, um, I think the. The most awesome thing about that is this is the only band I have or, or you know, I have ever done with only girls. Mm -hmm. There is always a boy around. Who, I Just drummers, you know, there's always boys. And this is the, um, I'm here in this band, I'm like drummer slash uh, percussionist. And we also have a bassist and we have uh, backing girls who does backings. Backing and, she also, vocals, yeah. and she does also play piano. And so we have the lead, Maika Adegees who is uh, playing guitar and singing and also writing the songs. And uh, well, actually all the three girls are studying at Godard's, which is the conservatory yeah. in Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. And that is very nice. And so uh, we are rehearsing there. I go there weekly. And that was actually also the first question when Maaike asked me to join the band. She was like, Danique, but we are rehearsing in Godard's Rotterdam. And will you be able or do you want to, you know, do you want to go there? Uh, every week is that possible for you can you make that i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> i want to go there <laughs> you know this is this, but, uh, no, you know i want to study there next year and uh, this is the place to be for me you know there it's so awesome still to go there every week you know you always get surrounded by by percussionists and other people who study there and you, you know when you go to that school it's not like high school where you go now everyone is making music there it's so cool also in the canteen uh, but we're releasing every week and, um, uh, you know, when the girl band kind of started, we, uh, that was in the period when Christmas was coming and Mike already wrote a Christmas song and we did that a lot. Um, Mike and Nick are also a, a, a duo together. So I already knew that song, that song is called Let's Go on a Date This Christmas. And she was like, no, but now I want to make this song a full song and I want to do this with the band. So uh, we we started, you know, putting IDs on the table and, and yeah. writing the song over, uh, putting all these instruments in there, and we recorded it. Um, but actually, it was very fun because um, the man who recorded it is Jasper Verberg. Yeah, he did. He was our sound technician actually, uh, at the performance of uh, me and Maike at Jazz Amersfoort, and he was like, "Girls, this is so good." You know, if you want to record anything, just call me, give me a call. And we, you, you know, we will make a demo or anything you want to. And so we were like, hey, we have this girls band. <laughs> and we, we, we want to record a single, all right? <laughs> and so we did, and it was very cool. We took two days to record the whole single. I took all my percussion instruments and just, you know, put all these little flavors in there. And also Eddie came around, which was so cool. He like, he was like, yeah, Danique. 
but this is studio work. This is not stage work. So you need to do this and this and this, <laughs> like this little sound. You need to add to it, you know. <laughs> and uh, but that was very cool. Thank you so much again for all that help. And we did record a video clip uh, wow. in it uh, in Velvet Music actually, which is mm, just yeah. a store of of. Uh, Platter, Platter. Records, yeah, exactly, yeah, record store, store. So these really old records you can buy there. So we got like this really vintage, yeah. Vintage look. Feeling, yeah, yeah, yeah. look also, which is something we definitely want to go for, you know, the vintage look. Also, we have plans with this band to just take this Volkswagen bus mm -hmm. and go to, Fra to the France, to the coast there and have a tour and just, you know, go to restaurants and say, hey, like we're a band and we just, we're gonna play here tonight, which, you which, know? Which is great to hear yeah. because <laughs> it's it's like going back in time, like you said, we spoke once in, in an earlier podcast with one of our uh, colleagues and uh, we were talking about the days when you went in a small bus and you, you traveled yeah, and you exactly. played at all the little cafes and stuff. <laughs> so it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to hear uh, that you know that's happening again you know and so it, and it's 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 a great experience it's, it's only going to make you richer as a person but also as a musician as well mm -hmm. and, and from inside you know and it's going to affect how you make your music how you play your music yeah exactly but also you, you know you're together with each other for we're going to go for eight days then and uh, you, you're around each other all the time you get to know each other better but also you're going to make uh yeah a lot of new music, Good. of course. That's great. That's great. Before before we before we uh, close our interview off with you, we always ask our artists if they've experienced an awkward or funny uh, situation. <laughs> okay. And uh -huh. you've been you've you know you you only you're sixteen sixteen years <laughs> young, but I'm sure you've had some funny situations in in your very short young career. Uh -huh. But you've done quite a lot, I know, and you've. So maybe you can tell us a little yeah. story or something. Mm -hmm. Well, what I just told you. All right, the Corvados. This is a, a band uh, who exists already for 30 years, I guess. And what kind of music are they making? They are making uh, music, uh, 60s, 70s, 50s, okay. uh, the old music, the, the, very, the Let's Dance and all this stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, they ask, yeah, the classics, exactly. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to uh, be their guest percussionist once. And it was so funny because, you know, uh, I didn't knew the bandmates at all. And I came there and I'm like, the band is totally, they're awesome musicians, but they're all 50, 50 plus, you know, 55 plus. Hey, 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 <laughs> and I'm playing, hey, hey, hey. I'm playing here. 55 plus thing now. And I'm, I'm, I'm here uh, as a 16 year old girl, you know, playing in between all these old musicians and they're and they're you know they're all saying on stage that yeah she's she's lowering the age you know she's say, she's putting the whole age down of the band and that stuff and it's so you know the, the great thing to see is um um also after the performance that you know the musicians came up to me they were like uh Peter, for example, he's the drummer, and he's such like the need. When you play in this band, you give us so much energy, you know. This, this, you know, a young person, you know, and she has like new ideas about music and that stuff, a new way to fill in the music, uh, and it's so good. It gives us so much new, more energy, and it's a bit, and it's so funny, you know. It's also when you see that picture, we have like this little picture was always to show when we perform, you know, in a in a program paper, paper, and you see like this gray hair everywhere and then this little young girl <laughs> <laughs> okay i also want to say one awesome thing of what i um uh, i am representing the Wistrum, which is also very cool this is i forgot to tell about the uh, world championships of performing arts because because of that i was um asked to do a production in holland opera mm -hmm. which is an awesome production company they do very professional uh, opera production together with uh, together with um, a dramatic art with uh, mm -hmm. uh, acting and so uh, they also have live music and I got asked to do the live music and so they got uh, they there was like a review in the Volkskrant with my name on it and uh, that 
uh, well, that the the maker of the Wistrom saw, and he contacted me, and he was like, Danique, we have this new instrument. It's called the Wistrom, and it's yeah, it's like a drum kit. Only you don't you only use your hands, and it's just on sticks and that mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, he was like, uh, Danique, yeah, uh, you know, uh, come along, just come by one time, and and yeah, you know, check it out. It's very cool. And so I did, and uh, you know, I'm right now re- representing it, and uh, I also got the opportunity to go on. To go to the music messe in Frankfurt last year yeah. to demonstrate the instrument, which wow. was so yeah, awesome this yeah. because this is like such a big messe, and I always wanted to go there. The first time I go there, I actually got to perform them, you know, because yeah, that was so great. I, I cool. performed there all day long. Well, well, listen, yeah. we we know we know we could talk, we could feel we could feel actually three podcasts. We <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Everything has you know. There's a time to begin and a, to begin and a time to finish. We and unfortunately we have to we have to cut our conversation a little bit short now, but we want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you yeah. too. And uh, I'm I'm as a teacher I'm very proud of you, uh, <laughs> as a, and also as a friend to you and your family also very proud. And I know your parents are really very proud. Oh, so they, thankful they, to them. They yeah. they do a lot for you, and that's great. Um, once again, if you want to find out anything else about Danique, you can uh, come to our uh, page on Facebook, and you'll see how you'll, you'll see all the information about how you can get in contact with Danique. Uh, also, you can write us an email on uh, the Rhythm Factory Podcast at gmail dot com. Once again, we want to thank our crew, our, our camera guys. Sometimes I always forget to, to thank you guys, <laughs> but uh, you know, Heis and 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 Frank and. We've got Ramona that uh, takes the pictures for us and Charles that does a lot of promotion for us for the Facebook page and everything. I want to thank our guests again, Danique. Thank uh, you too. Thank you so much. My co-host, Mr. Yeah, Kennedy. Thank you. My name is Eddie C. And we want to leave you with these last words. The youth are definitely our future. Also for the music. Thank you. And see you next time on the Rhythm Factory Podcast.